Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review for Married at First Sight, season 15, episode 11. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, y'all, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. When the episode first opens up, there are 24 days until decision day. So we're still here at this couple's dinner. Justin is outside, still confused about what happened. Alexis in her pink jumpsuit come out to see how they got there. I don't know how we got here, baby. Girl, anyway, he was like, you know, your body language, it was just shut down. And she's like, how? How was my body language shut down? I was sitting at a table. We were eating at the table with everyone. Alexis, now come on. Okay, because you told us that you did not want to tell the group that Justin was not progressing. So the fact that he picked up on your scent, okay, now you're standing here acting all confused. How? How was I doing that? He said, well, you know, I'm used to you being bubbly and wanting to speak, and it made it seem like you didn't want to tell them about my progress. And you would be correct, okay? That is right on the money. He's like, so that's why I kept asking. She goes, well, you know, going forward, can you say, baby, are you feeling isolated? Are you feeling alone? For what? Why would he ask you if you're feeling isolated or alone? You literally got upset because he complimented Mitch. Then he looked to you because he could tell that your body language and your demeanor and your energy had shifted. And when it was time for you to be called out about it, you pitched a fit, got up and sashayed off in your pink jumpsuit and then came back and gaslit this man. You don't feel isolated. You're fine. She's like, you know, when you're trying to check on me, you need to try to check on me. Because when you say that, it doesn't seem like you're actually trying to check on me. You know, that makes it seem like you want me to just tell them about your progress. He's like, no, I want, the, want you to tell them about our progress. Alexis, you're full of it. Okay, you're full of it. You just sat here and twisted this whole thing back on Justin. That was the premise of the dinner. Everyone was sitting around talking about their progress. Girl gone moving forward in the next scene we see Kristen and Mitch's apartment and all the ladies meet up there and at Nate and Stasha's apartment the men meet up so at Kristen's apartment they're asking about what's going on with Morgan so she comes in and she's basically telling them that she spoke to Alexis and she was telling Alexis you know I feel like Ben is lying about something I feel like he's keeping some things I feel like you lying right now okay because that's not the way you explained it last episode last episode you made it seem like Alexis heard on speakerphone and came running to you to tell you what I was doing now all of a sudden you sat with Alexis and y'all were chilling so let me get this straight you didn't know so you just told on yourself honey I'm about to break it down for y'all honey y'all get close you didn't know whether or not something was up with Ben, but you went and talked to Alexis about Ben potentially being a liar. So doesn't that make you guilty of the same thing that you're accusing Ben of doing? Because if Alexis didn't give you the information and you went to her because you were hanging out and said you felt some type of way, weren't you speaking negatively about your husband? Uh, okay, moving forward. So over with the men, Ben admits that he was talking to Justin behind her back and lying to her face. And he basically said, you know, that he couldn't get a word in edgewise with her. He's so afraid to talk to her because he'll say something wrong. She's very unforgiving. Then he holds it in. He feels like he's about to explode. So he needed to vent. So Mitch is like, well, people talking to their friends that are in the same experience is normal. Like, and if she can't handle it, then that's on her. I know that's right, honey. Not Mitch with the common sense. So all the men are like, well, what's wrong with talking to friends? And everybody's confused. That's what we want to know. What is the problem with him talking to a friend? We know you probably don't have many, honey. So it's not very many people that want to talk to you in that stank attitude. But for Ben, people actually want to hear him. So maybe there's that. Moving forward. So Justin's going to say in his confessional, you know, I just feel like Morgan isn't ready for marriage. I feel like she's all about herself. Like she wants somebody to listen to her vent, but she doesn't want to reciprocate. I don't think she's ready for marriage. And I don't think you and Alexis are ready for marriage either. And I don't like how the two of you sat idly by while the group got involved in this group therapy session to try to push these two back together when clearly they need to be so far apart. It's ridiculous. As a matter of fact, they need to go back to being strangers. We need to go back to that. 
Okay, and you and Alexis that started all the mess, y'all were just sitting back holding each other. Baby, you comfortable? I'm comfortable, baby. Anyway, moving forward. Over with the ladies. Morgan is saying that after the honeymoon, she's like, you know, you do realize that I took you back the first time you backstabbed me. Took him back? She is so dramatic, child. So dramatic. I think she thrives off of drama. I really do. Everyone is forgetting it all started because you lied, Chun Li. You lied. <laughs> you little street fighter. You lied. Okay? You keep trying to pin this on Ben, but you played a part as well. We are not going to absolve you of any responsibility. It's not happening over here, honey. Now, it might happen somewhere else, but it ain't happening over here. I don't like how Ben is being treated. I don't like that because the thing is, people like Ben with that sweet personality and, you know, they're kind of almost like people pleasers and he's really trying. That really ticks me off because I don't like bullies. And I feel like in this setting and in this moment Morgan is bullying Ben and try the whole time she talking Stasha looking at her like girl please <laughs> I was just waiting to figure out which one of y'all gonna say something but honey it's gonna go down in just a minute so she was like you know so to find out that he was still you know saying things behind my back it just really made me mad and you know I feel like it's been all about Ben this entire time I say what now Morgan it has always been about you and your drama. So what are you talking about? So she's like, yeah, he keeps changing whenever he gets in front of different people. So I don't really know who he is. And we don't really know who you are. Okay, you showed up in some scrubs, but what does that mean? Okay, I ain't heard nobody validate that you're a nurse yet. Or maybe that's just me. So Lindy in her confessional, she being all judgmental, talking about, well, I mean, bro, get it together. You need to figure it out. Lindy, honey, sweep around your own front porch first, okay? Because it looks like you and Miguel are going to fall the hell apart a little bit later. So she tells them that they're separated. She moved out and Stasha wants to know if, she, if he's fighting for it. She was like, is he fighting? Is he saying that's okay? Do your thing? Like, what is he saying? She's like, I couldn't tell you. She says, so he's not reaching out to you at all? She's like, no, it's radio silence. And why is that, Morgan? Why is that? Because every time he speaks, you bite his head off. She's like, I have to defend myself at this point because God knows what he's over there saying. He's not saying anything. He's saying nothing. Okay. Even though you try to make us believe that he's always saying nasty things about you. He's actually said not one negative thing about you since he's been sitting in the presence of the other men. But I know that's hard for you to believe because you want to make being the villain. Okay, when both of you are responsible for the foolishness, but the real villain in all of this will be Alexis. Honey, Alexis is getting rid of people left and right. First Maya, now Ben and Morgan's marriage. Alexis is on a roll, honey. You're over here telling and talking. So I'm just trying to figure out, is that allowed or is it not allowed? So can Ben not do it or like, how is it working? Okay, I just need to know how it's working. So Kristen was like, you know what? <laughs> Let's ride out. Let's go where the guys are. I mean, I'll lead the pack. I'll go with you if you want to. So everybody rises up because they're about to go over there and see what's all doing. So they're going to get into it as they get into it. Meanwhile, Ben is like, yeah, I mean, I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I lost at least seven pounds. Next thing you know, Stasha turns the key in the hole. Hey, babe. So they go over to Stasha's innate apartment to get to the bottom of it. So Miguel was like, so what was your breaking point? Okay, give me your side of the story. She was like, well, he broke my trust the first time on the honeymoon and he was so big on lies, you know, even little white lies. He didn't want us to tell lies. But then I found out that he's been lying to my face daily. So Mitch is like, what's the daily lie? <laughs> <laughs> now what's the daily lie, honey? So she's like, I mean, he was going to Justin, I mean, almost daily. So she goes, yeah, I mean, he could have said to me, listen, I'm going to Justin, I'm frustrated, I vented, and here's what I said. Morgan, get real, okay? When people vent to their friends, they don't come back and give you the transcript of what they said. They don't do that. If I go and vent, when I was with that ex, I used to call my BFF all the time and I would vent to her and I damn sure was not going back to that ex and saying, listen, honey, today I called you a douchebag. I said I wanted a divorce and I hope that you caught on fire. I just wanted you to know like people don't do that. So he needs to ask for your permission before he speaks to anyone like this is just OK. This is crazy. 
Miguel, I guess you're sitting in for the experts, honey. Shout out to you. So she's like, you know, it's never I hurt you. I apologize, Morgan. So you're going to just sit here and lie for the sake of lying? That man has apologized to you over and over and over and took full accountability for lying to you. Even though it was out of fear, he still took accountability. So Morgan, is, Morgan was like, you know, it's the lack of accountability on your part. So Miguel was like, Ben, you know, is that fair? Do you think so? And he said, yeah, I mean, yeah. So Nate said, uh, okay, we're all being politically correct here, but uh, what's up with the hostility? I know that's right, honey. Call her out, Nate, honey. Nate said, what's up, homie? <laughs> Listen, Nate, I know last I know last review, I called you a day trading stranger, honey, but you might be my kind of people, honey. Cause let me tell you something in the midst of it all, you called it out. You ain't afraid of no Muay Thai kickboxing Morgan, honey. You let it, you let it be known. Girl, why are you always so hostile? What is wrong with you? Okay. Like girl, whatever. So he said, you know, every time I see Ben, he's very calm, cool and collected. But all I see from you is being pissed. And in the confessional, he said, I feel like Morgan is one of those people that are just never satisfied. No matter what Ben does, she won't believe him. And he needs to speak up and not let her overpower him. Nate, I totally agree. You know, it's ironic because she has her own issues, but she wants perfection from Ben. I'm just not understanding that. But side note, Morgan, you have beautiful skin, but I don't like the way you're acting. Okay, I don't like how you're acting, how you're acting, girl. So Nate was like, well, you know, it's an abnormal experience. She's like, yeah, and since it's abnormal, you know, I need him on my side to have my back. Your back with what? Oh, okay, so you wanted him to co-sign the lie that you initially told in order to present a united front. Is that what's happening? So she's like, you know, it's betrayal of all people. I would have thought that he would be the one to have my back. So then Ben pipes up and he's like, you know, I take full responsibility. I came into this naive. You know, they asked me if I could handle someone with a strong personality and not a part of my culture. And I said, yeah, that's easy. But the truth is, it's not easy. You know, I have past traumas. So how can I make someone else happy when I'm not happy with myself? And then he apologized and he said he signed up for therapy. Ben, let me tell you something right now. Yes, you may need therapy, honey. And that's for some issues outside of what is happening with this woman that is making you go crazy, honey. She's manipulating you right now. And it's giving psychological abuse. Okay. It's giving very much psychological abuse. You did not do anything to Morgan. That was the end all be all. Morgan is something, else. baby. I don't know what she is, honey. But she done did such a number on Ben. He thinks he needs to get an exorcist. This is crazy. <laughs> Baby, this is crazy, honey. Oh, child, somebody call the exorcist. This is so intense. What is this hell for hiding that she needs to isolate Ben? I would hate to suggest a divorce. But in this case, honey, today should have been your decision. Day. You know what? Actually, when she threw them flowers on the, on the ground, that should have been your decision day. But this needs to be over ASAP because this could easily turn into emotional and psychological abuse. She's using loaded words like betrayal. Ma'am, if you didn't start lying first, you wouldn't be so paranoid. Now you think he's always talking about you because you lied. OK, and then when you tell one lie, you got to tell another lie to keep it with the other lie to keep it with the other lie. So that's on you. Moving forward, Ben and Morgan. Sure. Round two. So Morgan walked in looking all sleepy and they're meeting with Dr. Pepper. And so, you know, Dr. Pepper says she wanted to see what was happening with them because she's been hearing some things and um, she feels like, you know, she just wants to get to the bottom of it. So Morgan is like, you know, I really wanted to work it out, but I'm just still uncomfortable. I just really can't trust Ben. Girl, anyway. So Dr. Pepper tells them that they told her what's been happening. And so she wants to hear it from them. So she asked Ben what happened. And he said, you know, he was afraid to converse with Morgan. Okay. So he went to Justin to vent because it's just easier. So Dr. Pepper goes, well, do you see a male world with a wife in it as opposed to a wife and a husband being best friends? Uh, ma'am, absolutely not. We are not about to play that game. No, ma'am, Dr. Peppers. See, this is why Elijah Juan Isaac and his neck tattoo got on you last season. We are not about to do this. You completely dismissed the fact that he said he was afraid to talk to her. 
that is not healthy. How about asking why? Okay, don't try to flip it to him seeing it as a man's world. This is a man's world. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're not about to do that, honey. This is not what Ben is doing. Don't try that, Dr. Pepper, because that ain't going to work. She's like, well, I'm not letting her off the hook. Really? Because in this whole scene, I didn't see you hold Morgan accountable for anything. And Pastor Cal did the exact same thing when he came. Now, maybe it's because then you would have to admit that you guys don't go through these applications with a fine tooth comb like you're supposed to. Maybe it's because you don't want us to see that some people that are cuckoo kachu slip through the cracks, i.e. Morgan. So maybe that's why you don't want to talk about it. But you didn't challenge Morgan in the slightest. And I didn't like that. So Morgan was like, you know, I thought about it and I thought, you know, could I have used better words? Could I have used a softer tone? Yes. And yes. She's like, you know, I let him back in once. And is this what you do with your clean slate? Clean slate? Ma'am, you have never stopped holding this over his head. You brushed it under the rug for a little bit. But as soon as he pissed you off, it's back at one, honey. Shout out to Brian McKnight. And who are you? Who are you though? Why does he have to prove himself and you don't? Moving forward. So Dr. Pepper tells Morgan to write a letter to herself from, you know, who they are now. And then they both need to write the letter and read it to each other because that will help. What are they, Aaliyah? What is this, the four page letter? No, we're not about to do that. Dr. Pepper, that advice was awful. Okay. You may as well send them an email. You didn't directly tackle any issue. Child, we need Dr. Tracy from Family or Fiance because baby, she would have got on Morgan. One thing about Tracy, shout out to Tracy. Listen, Tracy, come on from off of on, okay? Come on over to Lifetime. Let them pay you the big bucks and you are who we need. You know, we can kind of get somebody else over to Family or Fiance, honey, because they're going to say yes to them people getting married no matter what. But these people, they need you. Because they're not getting the help that they need. Child, this is a fool. Stasha and Nate. So Dr. Pepper shows up to their house. And Stasha tells Dr. Pepper that she likes to move quickly. And, you know, Nate was a little bit slower to be vulnerable. And so Dr. Pepper told Stasha, you didn't marry you. I know that's right, honey. Now, I do like that advice. She's like, it's cool that you want things a certain way. But if you look for you and a partner, then you're going to be disappointed. I need that advice. Okay, Dr. Pepper. Okay. But we still need Dr. Tracy, honey. And you ain't fooling me. So then she brought up that they've had some fights. And so Stasha said that she was looking concerned when they got into their argument because she had never seen, you know, Nate respond like that. So Dr. Pepper said that when they get to fussing and fighting, honey, and arguing, they need to hold hands because they're a team and it's the team against the problem. Okay. I like that. I like that. You, you, you're giving them some Instagram quotes over here, some quotables. Then, of course, y'all know no session will be complete without the sex question. They did, in fact, say that they did the deed, honey. But I knew they did it, honey, when they got them tattoos, Kristen and Mitch. So she goes to see them and Kristen starts to talk and she starts to break down and says that Mitch was very vocal about not being attracted to her. So she wanted to make him happy and make him see that she would be a good wife and a good catch. But she doesn't feel like she wants to do that anymore. She's like, I don't want to walk on eggshells anymore. I don't want to do this. And you shouldn't. So Dr. Pepper was like, well, it's one thing to walk on eggshells and it's one thing to just be authentically yourself. So Dr. Pepper asked her, what would she need to feel like Mitch is working as hard as she is? And Kristen said, well, I'm gonna need some questions answered. Number one, okay. Are you completely over how you felt about me on the honeymoon? And you know, I'm not saying I need and I love you. But number two, I'm going to need an I could love you, Kristen. If he could, he would say he could. Okay, I'm so sick of y'all asking these men what they think, how they feel, hear up and tell, hear up and tell. Let them tell you when they tell you. It means so much more. Y'all can learn a thing or two from Lindy, even though she a little bit, you know, cuckoo cachoo. But I feel like she's allowing Miguel to move at his own pace when it comes to the love stuff. And we're going to get into that as we get into it. So Dr. Pepper is like, oh, well, that sounds like a demand. And this is a guy that doesn't do well with demands. Kristen said, oh, well, he shouldn't have gotten married. Uh, well, Cr Kristen, okay, a word. You don't get married to demand things. But I mean, he shouldn't have gotten married, honey, if he gonna act like this and tell people he ain't attracted to him in their face. He should have done something different. 
but I don't think you should demand something of him as far as his feelings because they're his feelings. So he has to feel them in order to tell you that he feels them. Moving forward. So Dr. Pepper was asking Mitch, she said, do you admire her? He said, yeah. Dr. Pepper said, okay, give me a string of nice words to describe her. Uh, I admire her. Uh, she's strong. She's stronger than me. Um, yeah, she, Mitch, no. Those were not kind words that you strung together, honey. It sounded like a struggle. No wonder she's confused as to whether or not you care anything about her. So child, he's speaking his speech and he said, you know, he was afraid, but she helped him to be a little bit less afraid. Okay. So Kristen tells Mitch that she wants to be validated more. How many times does she have to tell you, Mitch, before you catch on? This is like the fifth time that she's let you know that she wants to be validated. Now I have to say that I love how effectively Kristen communicates and I could see that Mitch's wheels was turning, you know, as she was talking because her representative is gone. Like she is still reeling from those harsh words that he said at the honeymoon. And that's why I always say, honey, words do matter. I don't care what people tell you. Well, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I always thought that was the stupidest saying that I had ever heard. Because not only do sticks and stones break your bones, but words break you as well. Okay, break you to hell down. And your bruises heal and you move on. But that psychological stuff up there and the words that people have said to you and they keep replaying over and over and over and over that stuff sticks with you so mitch get it together i'll leave it alone honey moving forward in the next scene justin alexis and newton honey because poor maya has been exiled from the family dr peppers goes to meet with them the way that justin is towering over dr pepper little bitto cell <laughs> Maybe it's hilarious. So she asked him what's going on with them. And he's like, you know, it's been an emotional day. So she's like, what's going on? Tell me about it. So, you know, the man was too stunned to speak. So Alexis tells Dr. Pepper that the trainer called and said that his dog is inconsistent and just attacks people and he shouldn't come get her. So she's going to be working on the farm. But yeah, she's not coming back working on the farm girl what in the old mcdonald is going on here justin how do you know that this man is telling the truth the place looks sketchy did you just abandon your dog for this woman you do know that alexis is playing you like a fiddle and even if she says yes on decision day you too will not make it because she does one thing in your face and she says another thing in those confessionals justin i know you didn't leave that dog I know you didn't leave that dog. He left that dog, y'all. He left that dog. He's like, well, you know, she was my first baby. I had her seven years. And I mean, you know, I needed to know she was in a great place. Dr. Pepper was like, sounds like she's in a wonderful place. Dr. Pepper, did you see that place? That man had on. He had on Michael Myers shoes. <laughs> them shoes. Them shoes. When they showed them shoes, honey, those shoes screamed halloween h2o i don't like it dr pepper that is not a great place alexis how much did you pay that trainer to make maya stay gone okay and you ain't fooling me allegedly because if he's attacking then he don't need to stay there child this is a whole fool but all jokes aside y'all i don't like how justin just agreed to give his dog up and that's that it reminds me of when people blend families and the stepmom comes in and doesn't want anything to do with the kids. So the dad treats the kids, you know, any old kind of way because the stepmom is uncomfortable. And that's what this is reminding me of. And I don't like that. Moving forward. So Alexis tells Dr. Pepper that they had a fresh start because after their fight, she said, you know, she didn't want to hurt anymore. So they decided to start over. So Dr. Pepper was like, well, you know, that's not all there is to it. So then Justin starts speaking his speech. He's like, you know, even though, you know, we may go through things, I have to understand that at the end of the day, even though she has a tough exterior, she's still sensitive. Alexis is like, no, I'm not sensitive. No. So Dr. Pepper wants to know why she doesn't like to be called sensitive. And she said it's just the way that she was raised. She never saw her mom, mom cry like ever. She was raised to not show her cards. And even though she knows tears don't equal weak, that's how she sees tears oh okay so you think justin is weak in essence honey because all he do is cry okay 
So she was like, you know, being vulnerable is dangerous because it shows everything and people can just play you however. Now, I have to agree with her with that because I've been in spaces where I feel like, you know, I don't want to just get vulnerable, honey, because then as soon as I let my guard down and you're going to try to pull a stunt and then it's going to be some foolishness. But at the same time, sometimes you have to figure out when is the right time. But that's something that people struggle with very often especially in our community you know it's just like we got to be strong and strong black woman and you know make sure you take care of everything don't let them see you sweat don't be weak don't let a man see you cry I don't subscribe to that okay I don't subscribe to that people always tell me that I wear my emotions on my sleeve now once I got older and saw how people played me because of that then I started to feel like okay listen I can't just be vulnerable with everybody because people be really tripping so I understand where Alexis is coming from with that so Dr. Pepper told her that it's their vulnerability that makes them strong and so she wants her to know that being sensitive and vulnerable is okay 21 days until decision day so the couples are showing their childhood stomping grounds they also wrote a letter to their younger selves Mitch and Kristen with the Y so they go to play softball and she said that she wanted to show Midge her sporty side. Okay, sporty spice, uh, side note, these pants are a no, Kristen. Okay, Kristen, you my boo. But those pants give SpongeBob in the back. <laughs> I don't like them pants. I don't like them pants, Kristen. I can see Kristen being a softball girl though. I really can. I can see her playing softball. So they're throwing the ball and Mitch definitely doesn't exude athleticism. Okay, it's not his strong suit. That's probably why he turned to the environment and whatnot. So Kristen and Mitch, they sit down and she said, you know, the field brought up emotions for her because she had to do things perfect. She couldn't strike out. You know, if she did, it was always an issue. You know, she would have to hear about it in the car on the way home. And it wasn't her dad. It was mostly her mom. Even with her grades, she wanted things to be perfect, which is probably why she is the way that she is. So Mitch was like, well, for me, it was the exact opposite. Okay, there was no structure. I didn't play sports and there was large room for error. Okay, well, that's why that place was so nasty. Because growing up, you probably was never told to clean up. Child, that's what's going on. Everything is starting to make sense. That's also probably the reason he doesn't like to be told what to do. He's used to doing what he wants when he wants. And then Kristen came in and he had to adhere to a little bit of structure. And that's why he was falling apart when she asked him to put on that shirt. It's given arrested development. Moving forward, Lindy and Miguel. I forgot all about them, child, but we're here. Dr. Pepper is visiting with them and Lindy tells her that she's still learning, you know, how not to be so defensive, you know, small things that Miguel may suggest to her. She can see herself starting to get defensive and she's trying to fight that. So she was like, you know, I'm insecure about being a wife because I want to make sure that I'm doing it right. And Miguel was like, babe, you're killing it. Oh, well, that was nice, Miguel. So Dr. Pepper asks if they've said I love you. So they just looking and she was like, no. So Dr. Pepper said, well, what I do know about love is that when you say it, you'll feel it. And then you'll look back 10 years from now and realize that what you're feeling now was nothing compared to what you felt when you said it, because love grows. Dr. Pepper isn't asking any questions to get the real, not none. What about the insurance outburst and the name change? Are we going to touch on that? What about, you know, her asking for grace when her crazy comes out? Is Miguel being his authentic self? Okay, is he allowed to express himself completely without fear of Lindy being upset? Dr. Pepper, where are you? Alexis and Justin, what are y'all wearing? Okay, before we even get started on y'all segment, honey, what do y'all have on? Justin is showing her where he grew up, right? With his brother raising him. And Justin said that, you know, he was pretty sheltered before moving there and he had never left his neighborhood in Alabama. So he told her that him and his brother, they shared a king size bed. And she's like, so how old were you? He said, well, the brother was 19 and he was 13 and he would discipline him and spank him. Spank him and he 19 and you 13 and you towering over him? How was that working? She's like, so a 19 year old raising a 13 year old? Alexis is ready to run. I feel like she questions him to get everything she needs to get. So on decision day, she can write down the pros and the cons and it's gonna be all the cons, honey. But my question is this, 
why was Justin's brother raising him? Where was his mom? Like what led her to send him to the brother? So he said, you know, his brother was strict, but always told him to just figure things out. Just figure it out. If you don't know it, figure it out. So Alexis said, well, you know, that makes sense as to why he doesn't tell her certain things. And he tries to work things out on his own. She's like, so you fly kites, huh? He was like, yep. I do. I fly kites. She was like, so when is the last time you flew a kite? He going to say, uh, probably 10, I mean, 15 years ago. Nah, it was more like five. <laughs> you know, you're still flying them kites and that is okay. If you want to fly a kite, honey, he didn't want Alexis to make fun of him. And she was like, well, I was about to say you 33, the mad thing, mad thing. Alexis, you always got something to say. You don't like that. He fly kites. You don't like that. He live in a, a studio apartment. You don't like this. You don't like that. You don't like Justin. Okay. You don't like him. Justin, you and this blouse. Okay. You and this blouse in this park. Y'all are working my nervous system. <laughs> I try so hard to ignore this blouse. Oh, Justin. What is this Peter Pan blouse? Oh, child. Moving forward. He was like, well, you know what? I have a kite with me right now. She said in her little interview thing, she's like, I didn't think I'd be flying a kite today. She gonna be telling Justin to go fly a kite on decision day because she is definitely judging everything he said on that bench and that blouse. I'm just telling you right now. Kristen and Mitch. He has some pictures of his childhood and, you know, he's hoping that sharing these things with Kristen will give her a little insight into who he actually is. So, you know, he's sharing the pictures and they're of his dad and he's telling her stories about his dad. And he tells us that his dad died in 2014. And, you know, he's sad because he didn't get to tell his dad how proud of him he was. And he feels like his dad would have definitely liked Kristen. So he starts to tell Kristen how things changed for him after his dad left. He started causing trouble, being more frustrated. She wishes that she knew all of this before that because she may not have been so angry. Uh, yeah, I hear you, Kristen. But uh, at the same time, honey, you can't just be going on national TV and embarrassing me saying you ain't attracted to me. I would still be pissed. Yes, this gave me a little bit more insight into who mitch was and i felt like he was being very vulnerable and really letting Kristen in this entire episode i really do but uh i would still be mad stasha and nate so she's reading her letter to her younger self and nate was like okay okay i see you bars <laughs> i'm starting to really like these two together so then he reads his letter and baby nate was giving himself a uh, baby all the juice do you hear me he was like yeah I just want you to know that you're smarter than the smartest kid in every grade. I know that's right. So they started talking about how they were at school and Stasha said that she would eat lunch alone. She was really, you know, just kind of a loner. And he was saying that he really never fit in with the people at his school either. So he was kind of like the same way. And, you know, they bonded over that. Lindy and Miguel. So they go swing dancing. Honey, at least it isn't salsa. Because we all know that that's going to be a disaster. Every single season when they go salsa dancing, it's a fool. So they sit down after they get to get through one, two stepping. And she starts to tell him that she wasn't allowed to dance growing up. She's like, you know, we couldn't eat shellfish. We couldn't dance. And I'm not really sure why we couldn't dance. We just couldn't dance. But, you know, now she's dancing, drinking, eating sushi, honey, doing everything she want to do. I would have never survived. And I do mean not never. Okay. So then she read her letter to her younger self and they talked about it. And, you know, I can see that now Lindy is breaking out of her shell because she was so sheltered with her religion. And the fact that Miguel embraces her and he really listens to her, it could be a good thing for Lindy. But I got my good eye on her, okay? Mitch and Kristen. So they go to visit his dad's tombstone. And he said that he wished he could have told his dad how proud of him he was. And, you know, him and Kristen, they're sitting there and they're sharing things together. And he told Kristen that the dad would really liked, would have really liked her. And Mitch is really warming up to his marriage. Okay. Sharing that with Kristen was really major. That was a very personal thing. And to do it not only with Kristen, but on television. And we all know how Mitch is. That was a major milestone for Mitch. He making some progress. Y'all got to go on and give it to him, honey. I know y'all can't stand Mitch, honey, but we got somebody else on the horizon. Okay. Morgan, Stasha and Nate. So he's taking Stasha to where he grew up. And as he's showing her around the neighborhood, his dad walks up. 
so he's telling Stasha about how Nate was at a, as a child and how he always had to get him out of some type of trouble, honey. Because Nate was doing something he had no business doing. So Stasha's like, uh, dad, if I may. <laughs> Maybe Stasha say, I am the daughter-in-law, okay? So she was like, so how did you do it? I mean, being a single dad, like how did you do it? And he basically said, you know, people used to commend him and he started to get teary-eyed. He said people used to commend him on taking care of them as a single dad, but that's what he was supposed to do because he was their father and that was his kids. So Stasha starts tearing up as well. So the dad was basically saying that, you know, normally he never shows emotions because Nate brought it up that he's never seen his dad cry. But I am kind of happy that he was able to be vulnerable in that moment because that'll allow Nate to see, listen, even my tough dad has shed a tear or two. So if it comes down to me, then I should be able to do it as well. This scene made me warm up to the two of them as a couple. It really did. Nate won some major points with me this episode, especially when he called out Morgan. Ben and Morgan. So Ben is sitting in there in another one of his, his, his sweaters, okay? Ben is saying to himself or to us in the confessional that he's trying to win his wife back. Why though? Let her loose to the streets, honey, with her judgments. Yes, honey, let her go. Okay, let her go. So she comes in, fee, five, four, fum. So she come on in, child. So she comes stomping in with her negative energy. And so she sits down. So he starts to read his letter, right? Y'all, he read his entire letter. The whole time, she making faces, really not even listening. This is the most grudge holding I've ever seen on TV. Ever. She went lying when she said, you know what? I'm going to show up for the next four weeks and you're going to see me and you're going to know how you hurt me she meant that so after he reads his letter she lets him pour his heart out right y'all after he reads his letter she gonna say I'm not comfortable reading my letter because every time I let my guard down and every time I tell you something personal you run back and tell the guy so I just can't really trust you okay I'm over Morgan Morgan you give pathetic okay you're giving me pathetic I am just done with you. What are you even talking about? They will hear whatever it is on that letter anyway when they watch it back. Y'all might need to make sure that Morgan ain't a fugitive, honey. Because I mean, I have never seen nobody so secretive in my all my life. Girl, what are you saying? So you came for no reason just to be ugly and just to hurt his feelings. Why did you even show up? You need help, okay? Nobody is ever going to want to put up with your vile ways nobody in their right mind oh and Ben walk away from this okay walk away it's never going to work Morgan is not the type of woman for you you need someone with more understanding someone with more compassion someone with more grace you definitely definitely do not need a Morgan 19 days until decision day Alexis and Justin so they're playing basketball they're playing basketball Ball. <laughs> so they're playing basketball honey getting their loving basketball on and she said she brought him to the court so that he embraces her tomboy side you know it's so crazy to me that justin wanted to fly kites and alexis wanted to take him to the court child it's definitely giving freaky friday okay so they sit down and alexis reads this letter to justin about how she never asked for help and you know she's trying to break the cycle of hyper independence yeah, I got that problem sometimes too, where I much rather do it alone than ask for help. But that's because when I do ask for help, nobody comes to help me. So it's like, you know what? I might as well just do it myself because it's like people always act like they're busy whenever I ask for something. So now I just do it on my own. Miguel and Lindy. So they're learning more about Miguel's culture and he starts to tell, you know, tell her that he struggled because he wasn't white enough for some of his peers. And it was just really a struggle trying to find his identity. And that explains why his sister speaks that way. I think she was trying to, you know, fit in. So then he reads his letter to his younger self. And so after he reads the letter, then he tells her, I love you. Do you? Do you love her? Did Dr. Pepper put that in your head? So, of course, you know, she said it back, honey. So they love each other. Okay. He said it was the easiest thing that he's ever done, falling in love with Lindy. 
Okay, so now we have three couples in love, one in limbo, and one that has an unforgiving street fighter and a timid, frugal mama's boy. Got it. Poor Ben. He deserves better. He really does. He deserves better. I can't believe they matched him with old lion, self-absorbed Morgan. And did not tell y'all, review number two, when she did not care about him having that beer virus, I knew something wasn't right about her. I just knew it. Stasha and Nate. So she's showing him her old neighborhood and you know, they're bonding over the hustle of it all. Honey, she used to sell denim purses, custom, okay? With embroidery straight from the mall. <laughs> Baby Stasha said, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. And you know, he said he used to sell DH Gates finest. So there's that, Tony, they both hustling. And they said, you know, he always wanted someone that he could be a power couple with. And he loves the hustle in Stasha she's an entrepreneur through and through and that's the type of woman that he wants so then they went to her childhood friend's home and it's the home that she lived at with her friend Deanna she finished high school from there because you know she didn't want to have to move when she had gotten to know these girls for so many years and the family is the Mentos so Mr. Mento tells the story about Stasha being dressed up for a date right and being ready to run out the house when the guy honked the horn he was like but I stopped her and I told her that he needs to come in and not honk the horn for her. I wish more young girls had a Mr. Mento because it teaches you to respect yourself as a lady. Like shout out to him for stepping in as a father figure for Stasha. It is so important for both boys and girls to have a positive male figure in their lives. I need a Mr. Mento, okay? Cause my dad didn't tell me nothing about running out, honey, running out, running in, nothing. I basically learned everything on my own, which is probably why I had such tumultuous relationships. But y'all, that's a story time for another day. Mitch and Kristen. So they're sitting on the beach and they each read their letters and Mitch's was very long. However, it did touch me a little bit. It really did. He really said, he said he never really fit in and he probably has some insecurities, I'm guessing, still about being accepted. You know what? I feel like he may have been pushing Kristen away because he was afraid she might push him away first. Because let's just think about it. He was talking about the abstinence of it all. And he was saying that, you know, it wasn't by choice. So he was probably rejected. And the way that house looking, honey, I mean, you just never know. I just feel like Mitch, it, it, it could possibly be something if he could get himself together. This moment between these two was very sweet. And right now, honey, we can't focus on Mitch. Okay, Mitch ain't doing nothing to bother us right now. Him and his ways, child, we'll get back to it and to it when we need to get into it. What we need to focus on right now, y'all, is Morgan. Okay, she has taken his spot for me. And that was the end of the episode. Child, y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about Morgan showing up to hear a letter only to say she was not reading hers. What did you think about the ambush in the group therapy session while Alexis and Justin just sat idly by? What did you think about Ben saying he needed to exorcise his demons because Morgan has manipulated him into thinking he's all the problem? Child, this episode right here was an entire fool. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly how you feel about it. We are going to have a live. I'm not sure what day, but I will keep y'all up to date. Check the community tab for any information because we got to get together and talk about this. It may be tomorrow and it may not, honey, but we're going to get into it as we